Hello, yep. everybody. Welcome back to the Super Scouts. Hello. Yo. What's happening, folks? What's good? What's good? What's good? Yeah. How we doing? How we doing, people? Doing pretty bueno tonight. That's good. We just filmed like an hour ago, so yeah, we're we just did. back, back on the grind. Back on the grind. So I guess we already did our intros, but try to remember something else that you've watched recently. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll start us off. I uh, went and saw the Meg to the Trench last night, and it was a movie. It happened. It, I watched it. It was like, okay, can I be honest? The first, okay, it's a fun movie. We'll say that. Like, I, like, it's Jason Statham fighting Megalodon. So, like, you can't expect anything different than what you get. But there's a lot of things in it that make it really dumb. And it's not very good. And I keep forgetting that I actually watched it. And it's not, like, if you're going to watch a movie in the theaters, and somebody recommends the Meg too. I just say no. Strongly <laughs> worded. Strongly worded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? I just about a few minutes ago finished doing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or the Philosopher's Stone, as Warner Brothers like to, likes to call it. And I will be honest, uh, Harry Potter has definitely gained some traction over the few years. I mean, J.K. Rowling, the transphobia recently, and uh, I absolutely oppose her for that, just saying. But aside from that, though, I really do say on the hindsight of it, there are effects that have aged well in that movie. John Williams' score, that guy never lets down, never lets down his finger on the baton. And it really amazes me how much he can go on a high tempo. I really think that the acting can be a little cheesy and hammy at times given that they were still figuring out well where are we going to go off of an adaptation where are we going to go off the screenplay and i also think overall in terms of the story it definitely still lays up to what it expects to stay it's still expect a petroleum even his what the fuck did you just say expecto petroleum continue zach continue zach don't (laughs) don't ruin my don't ruin my wizard we yeah, oh his wizardry is on a different level. You just can't comprehend. You're a muggle. <laughs> you are a muggle, a strong muggle. Stopping, stopping a Dursley. Straight Gryffindor over here, bruh. <laughs> I'm the Roundhouse Ravenclaw. <laughs> you Ravenclaw? Oh no, uh, no, I'm a, I'm a Slytherin. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ew. It, yeah. It's kind of surprising. I actually did get for the house. I got a mix between Gryffindor and Slytherin, though. So it's kind of evened out. I know. I I I kind of hate that I'm a Gryffindor, but because like people are like, oh, it's basic, you know, because that's what the movies follow. But like, yeah. like I wanted something a little bit different, but you know, I guess that's just the way things roll. Mm-hmm. Mm, Suffice to say the least. Okay. Uh, I have re. It wasn't really recent, but I watched Titan uh, from Neon on Hulu. Fucked up. Uh, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button for the first time. Benjamin Venture. Button. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. And yeah. I have nice. to say, did, did uh, David Fincher do what Zodiac? Or was he that did. someone yeah. else? That's right, yeah. Zodiac was a really good movie last time I saw it. Speaking of David Fincher, <laughs> let's get into that topic. Oh, no. Uh, what's up, Zach? Let's get into our topic. Oh, As we should. So about. I'm like, I'm actually excited to talk about all this, but like, there's just, there's just not, it's like picking a favorite child. It's not gonna like also you can't love them all. uh, You can't rank them. That's horrible. And second of all, it's the um it changes like depending on the day. Like today, I feel this way, but like tomorrow or like twenty minutes from now, I might feel a different way. 
and that's like horrible to think about because now I'm putting my thoughts out and like this is gonna be contained and to my thoughts right now at ten oh nine, not two days from now when I have it's different just, thoughts. So it's just a thermometer that's rising up and down, but it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be cold sometimes, but that's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, what is our main topic, Zachary? Our main topic is our top five favorite directors of all time. Woo! Bing 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 Yay. <laughs> So how would we start with this? Okay, I think I think it's I don't care the order. I think we all go five 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 four 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 mm-hmm. three 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 like that. And That's actually we'll just, pretty good, yeah. We'll just work our way down. But I think we should really start off with our honorable mentions. Okay. Let's do it. Give me like five honorable men- mentions, Zach, or whatever you want. I'll let Camden go first. Cam, go first. Oh, you have to pin it on me. Okay. <laughs> I, I'll go okay. first if you want me to. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. Uh, so for probably number five on honorable mentions, my first would probably be the infamous Robert Eggers. I really do have to say that man never ceased to amaze me, even with the first time I saw The Witch. Because before that, I watched The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse still amazes me to this day with how well done it's made. But the thing that fascinates me about Robert Eggers, he was a stage playwright who went instantly into filmmaking. And honestly, par for the course, it definitely, the line's not even blurred there. But at the same time, though, I think that his his filmography has never been disappointing. I mean, I haven't seen The Northman yet. I've heard that is amazing, though. But The Witch, though, you have to give credit. That's one of the creepiest movies that has ever been made to this date. I think that it's definitely worth a watch, maybe one or th- four times at least. <laughs> the, <laughs> I think The Lighthouse might be up there with him too. It's definitely worth watching if you like watching Robert Pattinson get completely uh, shirtless. And also, He's it's naked, home dog. What do you mean? Yeah, and that Willem Dafoe crack. Great. I want that. Exactly. <laughs> keep it, keep it secret. Sorry. <laughs> Fortnite. Like- Right up there. <laughs> the Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> oh my! I just re- I, I've also been thinking too lately. Uh, I know I also know that Robert is currently doing Nosferatu. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's based off of a ancient vampire myth, and it's supposed to be Bill Skarsgård also taking the role and a few other people that. I, actually, I don't know the cast to be particular. Bill Skarsgård's the only one. It's currently in production right now, but it's I'm sure it's on hold right now due to the strike. It's it's because of it's by focus, so it's on hold. Dang, that's right. Mm-mm. But I have to say though, Robert Eggers though, it's not gonna. I have I have the least doubt that that man will not hold his finger on letting a few gruesome moments happen. I, no, I highly sure. doubt it. Yeah, you'll be great. I, I, I'm excited for that as well. Okay, mm. can we get your second honorable mention? <laughs> My second? <laughs> God. Yeah, I did go on a tangent there. Okay. Yeah, like, wow. I think honorable mentions are just like... Bam, 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 bam. Just the bam. name. And then we'll get really into our our bag with our favorites. Because if not, oh. if we're going to be here all night, you know? It's going to be a three-hour episode. If we... All right. <laughs> I have school. <laughs> okay, just like Zach said. Uh, so for our viewers, that was just the icing on the cake, but we're not fully b- done baking yet. But let's no. continue on. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. oh my god. Okay. Okay. On to number four, though. Uh, I'd probably say Spike Lee is definitely up there with my honorable mention. I think number three. What's the... Who's the one who directed Seven Samurai, now that I remember? Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa, that's right. Number two on my list, most likely, will be Toby Hooper. And number Mm. one, for the honorable mention, goes to... Well, now I'm at a loss for words, but let me get back to... Okay, Ari Aster, number one for honorable mention. 
you cut out. What is it? What is your number one honorable mention? Oh. I would say he it would be Ari Aster. Mm. Mm. Good list, good list. Good list, good In, list. Indeed. I think you want me to go next? Sure. Okay, so my my honorable mentions are this is tough because now I have to lock this means I'm locking in my finals list as well. So I'm just going to do it because this is what I have written down and I'm just going to go with it. But this is so hard and I it's going to change. Like I might change at the end of this podcast and be like, all right, I don't know. But anyways, my honorable mentions are um, David Fincher, which we just talked about. I'm very excited. He makes great movies. Edgar Wright. He's awesome. Oh, ooh, that's a good one. Denis Villeneuve, Denis Villeneuve, you know, Dune, Prisoners, he's awesome. Um, Number two, Sam Raimi, I love his Evil Dead, I love his Spider-Man, he's great. And then number one, my honorable mention is Richard Linklater, he almost made it, he was very close. That's a very underrated one too. Yeah, R- Richard is awesome, and I I love him. But there's it's so hard to pick, and I think my like final list is I feel good about it. It's a little more like, like I'm not going for like the best directors. Like I know there's like a few like Quentin Tarantino is not on my list. Scorsese's not on my list, but like I I'm going for like a personal like who I really love and not like the best, like Oscar winners, highest Rotten Tomatoes type thing. So yeah. Definitely not a film bros session. That's for sure. Yeah. Like, (laughs) but anyways, go ahead, Zach. Yeah. Um, Oh my God. Jesus Christ. This is so difficult. Um, Take your time, Zach. Not too much time. I have to go to school. (laughs) Indeed. <laughs> Martin McDonough. Okay. Uh, yes. Banshees, three ep- three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Two great moves. Mm-hmm. Um, Todd Field, Tar. And he has done some other movies. I just can't remember what right now. Gotcha. Um... Wes Craven. Okay. Ooh, that's good pick. Good pick. Didn't catch that. He's just the impact alone he's had on the on the horror genre is amazing. James Gunn. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. With his Guardians movies and the Suicide Squad. Superman. I was I was gonna ask uh, Zach, how'd you feel about uh, Brightburn? It's okay. It I think Brightburn is dope. Player. Like the idea of Brightburn is insane. I th- I thought it was a I good just idea. I wish it was done better. It, it could have been done a little better, but I think for what it is, it's it's pretty dope. Mhm. And then my first duo on the list, Lord and Miller. Ooh, yes. I almost put them. All right. They have so many good movies. You gotta give him credit, Spider Man this year across the Spider Verse. That has to be, uh, it has to be up there at the Oscars this year for sure. I think it's gonna win. I oh, don't yeah. know about Best Picture, but animated. It's for gonna sure. win Best Animated. No, ba- no it's I, gonna be BAFTA. I hope it really. I hope it genuinely does get nominated for Best Picture though, because like the, the impact and like how many people love this movie, it, it deserves it. I didn't expect it to get this much love this year because uh, Into the Spider Verse was so so shortly acclaimed. Yeah, it was, but Into the Spider Verse was so good, and like it's just crazy that they somehow pulled off like even coming close to that. It's insane, mm. but yeah. Anyways, all right. Now, who wants to go first? I think, Zach, you did your honorable mentions last. You got to do your... (laughs) 
Okay, number five. I'm gonna go with Ryan Coogler. Okay, I oh. almost put on my honorable mention. Okay, I like All that. All right, my pick. guy. Yeah. Green, mm -hmm. Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Fruitvale Station. Produced. Yeah. Judas and the Black Messiah. Fruitvale Station is awesome. That movie is amazing. That's a great M a Michael B. Jordan uh, performance. The Black Messiah, too. That's one of my favorite movies, too. I think the yeah. performances are stellar in that movie. Oh, man. Daniel Kaluuya. Oh, and Lakeith Stanfield, too, though. They're both amazing. Both mm -hmm. are awesome. I need to watch that movie again. But that movie is awesome. Mm. Okay. We're going to go in reverse order. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, okay. Man. So, my five is... He is just a director that, like, he when he when he hits, he hits, but when he misses, he misses. Yeah. And I understand that, and we all know his misses, but I don't think we give enough credit for his hits. My number five is M Night Shyamalan, oh, and I know he is a, he has <laughs> big misses, yeah. but his hits are so good. And like, I don't know, I just grew up on his movies. I grew up on. I grew up on Signs. I grew up on Six Sense. I grew up on um, Unbreakable, Split, and Glass. The, that trilogy is underrated, and I love that trilogy. I just, it's awesome. So, yeah. His hits are classic. I don't they think are. you're not wrong at all. He, he he's got amazing hits, but then he's also got Avatar. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it. He's got, I don't know. He, and honestly, like even knock at the cabin and old they aren't that great to me maybe i need to rewatch it or something I like maybe i don't get it a lot i like to knock at the cabin but like you know it doesn't hit like his hits but like still they're pretty good like, you can't be mad at them i i'll give him credit he definitely tries for some of the movies that are definitely like at the end of the totem pole but this the good thing about him is that he honestly doesn't care as much about his audience, so he really just goes and does what he wants. So yeah, got credit, credits do where credits do. Yeah, he's got creative vision, and he'll stick to it no matter what. Did uh, did he do signs? He did do signs. Oh, I forgot that's, about that's signs. Right. Signs yeah. is Walking like the best, one of the best, and alien movies up there. That movie is so awesome. I think it's good, and it's also very creepy, in my opinion. It is terrifying when you first see that alien in the in the VH or on the, on the TV when Joaquin Phoenix is in the closet. That mm -hmm. scene is like burned into my brain. I love that scene so much. But we can't we can't deny that that um that scene that um twist is horseshit. No, it's not. It's awesome. Yes, it is. No, they're it's not. they're trying to take out their biggest threat. It makes sense. Holy. They went to a planet that is seventy five percent water. They're That's trying to fun. take out their biggest threat. Oh my god, Zach. Think about it. If they're come if you going after somebody, you want to go after somebody that you know is coming like they got the they got the goods that can take you out. So they're like, yo, this place is made out of seventy five percent of water. They could just throw a tsunami on us. So let's just kill them before they even get the technology that even know we exist. And that's what they tried to do, but Mel Gibson and his craziness stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And his QAnon bullshit stopped <laughs> Okay. Mel Gibson as a human, I don't love. But Mel Gibson in Signs, he is, he is, he's, my, he's my guy. He's got timeless performances, but yeah, outside of that, he is a douchebag. I can't he's agree horrible. with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Camden. All right. So, uh, first on my number five list, it's probably going to be Ridley Scott. Ooh, that's a good pick. Yeah, I'm it think, is. I, I got to be honest. Uh, the first movie I watched wasn't Alien, Blade Runner. That movie really did uh, turn me on to his world about how he likes to go more sci fi tech, and he definitely likes to bring it more into fantasy type things. Um, What's the movie? The Last Duel with Adam Driver. I know that movie got a lot of uh, hate in I, itself. I love that movie. I thought Matt Davin did a pretty good performance. Adam Driver, too. Our daddy, he's still good as well. 
<laughs> Facts. I mean, fu- we, we laugh, but we, he's Daddy, I mean, Adam Driver, I mean, sorry. Adam, stepdad, yeah, Adam, uh, I mean. <laughs> father? I mean, what? Sorry. So what, what, what I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Ridley oh. Scott is great. And I, 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 I agree. I think... In my opinion, I know a lot of people love uh, Blade Runner 2049, but I think the original Blade Runner is, like, way better, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Twenty, You're not wrong on that. 2049, it had an impact. I really do like that it's, you know, it's visually stunning. It's got a good cast. It definitely was ahead of its time, but you can't beat the classics, in my opinion. That's just yeah. the thing. And, like, the production design and just everything about blade runners is awesome but they but the, she they also 2049 also gave us on an airman's who's fucking hot bro but the villain of blade runner the original he is like one of my favorite villains of all time he is so dope i love that villain sorry I, that was had nothing to do I with on the armas but s- still Huh? Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, I know. He is awesome. And but when it comes to Denis Villeneuve, like I have like two other movies that I like more than Blade Runner. Dune. Uh, Dune think... and Arrival are so awesome. But you know, Arrival is a great one too. Arrival is amazing. But uh see... Oh wait, Zach, continue. What? Oh yeah. I, I... Yeah. I was just saying I want to see Enemy. Enemy is awesome as well. I need to, too. Uh, but with Ridley Scott also, uh, Gladiator, that movie has some pretty good performances, too. I know the sequel's going to come out soon. I do think yeah. Russell... Yeah! Yes! <laughs> Paul Mescal, Let's go! Bro, that cast is insane. Paul Mescal, Denzel. Bro, I'm going to be in the theater. Zach, why are you shaking your head right now? Uh... <laughs> You're Zach, <laughs> Zach, Zach, how could you not express this much excitement? No, it's a historical movie, and it doesn't need a sequel. I, I don't know if it if it was good the first time, then maybe the second time it something could come around. And no movie needs a sequel, Zach. We've we've established this, but when sequels happen and they're awesome, that's that's what makes a great sequel. You know. Do we need a think... Terminator 2? No. No. But when it happened, it was amazing. And it's the it was best Terminator than the movie. first one. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Do we need aliens? I... No. But when it came no. out, it was awesome. Speaking of those two movies, number four's okay. number pick is James Cameron. Oh. If I... Oh, okay. James Cameron. Not bad. I mean, I think James Cameron, like... Like, when it comes to audiences and stuff like that, the dude, he can't be beat. He's got four of the top grossing movies. To It's insane. He's he's a madman when it comes to all that stuff. But, like, I don't know. Like He's also a mastermind. I think he's that just, man has... Yeah. He's a genius. He, he's a he visionary is. at his finest. Yeah, I think if you... I think, like... He is very smart when it comes to audiences and like knowing what they want and appealing to them and then getting butts in the theater. And this man has like probably saved movies because of how much money he's brought in to the to the business. But like I don't know. As James Cameron as a like a, a human and as his movies are, they're just like they're pretty good. To uh-huh. me. Jim, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Cam, that, was, what... that, that was my story. I literally just put a song in. <laughs> it, it was Mark Corbett. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. I, 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 I was going to I was gonna say, Zach, uh, have you seen The Abyss from uh, James Cameron? No. That's a classic, and it's definitely one that I would recommend watching. And it also has uh, Michael Ben. The original Judd, Kyle Reese. Oh, I love Kyle yeah. Reese. Mm-hmm. 
I think he's the best one out there. I don't. I I will be honest about this. Terminator Genesis. It, I hate that movie so passionately, but I think overall it would have been a good idea if they at least went for something better in the screenplay. I think it was horribly managed. Yeah. Well, they did Tim Miller dirty. They did Tim Miller dirty. That's fucked up. Terminator Genesis. I, I was so hyped for that movie, man. I remember. They hired, they hired the fucking director of Deadpool and gave him that bullshit. Oh no, that's Terminator Dark Fate. That's still yeah, awesome. yeah, Terminator Dark Fate. After James Cameron was out of the director's chair, Terminator went really downhill. But it's okay. It's okay. We'll we'll get past I, it. In my defense, uh, Terminator Three, that one with Rise of the Machines, the one with the female uh, Terminator, it's not a bad one. I really think overall, yeah. though, it's very sketchy, though, and it's very like it's very you know where it's going. It's expected. It's just that generic Hollywood. It is, and like for Terminator sequels, it, it's not the worst. I mean, Terminator Three was a dumpster fire. Um, Terminator <laughs> Genesis was horrible, and um, what else? Oh, and Terminator and Salvation? I never yeah, even finished that. It was rated PG thirteen and it looks I, I think it I think it has like a six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Sitting what at is, a cool six. What is the tomato meter? Hold on. Pretty sure. I, I don't think you're wrong. Like I've never even fully watched it. So Bro, they showed the fucking it's, twist in the trailer. What it's thir- it's thirty three percent, never mind. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, it's I mean, not terrible. to what I thought, it wasn't that bad. But anyways, yeah. All right, Spencer. Uh, okay, let's see here. Oh man, my fourth is the homie Paul Thomas Anderson. Got him at number four. Mm-hmm. He's got Punch mm-hmm. Drunk Love. There will be blood. Boogie Nights. Um, what else has he got? I haven't seen Boogie Nights. Oh, Phantom Thread. Yeah. He's got. Have you seen it? Yeah. He's got a lot of great movies. I think I just like. I love Punch Drunk Love. That's like top four of my movies. You just really love Adam Sandler. I I do love Adam Sandler, but at the same time, that movie is just awesome. That whole movie is just amazing. I watched it so many times. I, I love that movie. I've never seen any Paul Thomas Anderson movie. You get you gotta get on that because he's 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 a master. I no. I've been wanting to watch The Master, by the way, but I haven't gotten around to that. But Philip Seymour Hoffman in his final role. Yeah, mm-hmm. super sad, but I mean, it's I just love Paul Thomas Anderson. He he's got like any movie if he's coming out with a movie like I'm initially immediately interested no matter what you get to see licorice pizza i did see licorice pizza and you like it? i did like it i think it's overhated i think people don't like it because of the positive light and what it portrays see i understand that but i think it doesn't i think it doesn't point it in a positive way if you watch the movie i don't think it it didn't feel positive the way they were portraying the message of the whole thing. At the end, it ends in a happy way, but like you know, it's not going to end well. So it's just kind of mm-hmm. you you know that it's not going to it's it's not very positive. And that's got to be on my watch list. I got to check that one out. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson is my number four. He's great. I love Punch Drunk Love. So yeah. Next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alrighty, guys. Uh, so, who was my fourth one, actually? Uh, who did I have? Oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Number four for mine is the Safdie Brothers. Mm, good I got it. Yeah, that's literally... That was my first movie that I watched. I think the scope that they give for movies ar- around theirs... It's definitely more of like in a, uh, it's very an emotional tugging experience. And it's also a very in your head, you don't know if this is really happening experience. And hence, good time. I think really the scenes where it's really hectic and the camera's obviously shaking so much, it definitely feels like something you could picture as like a grainy picture that's being tossed around so much and you're trying to get all the water off of it. 
that's the best way I would describe movies like theirs, and especially with uh, what was the movie with Adam Dr- with Adam Sandler. I th- I forgot what it. Was. He disappeared. He cut out. Sorry, you oh, cut no. out, Cam. Oh, I forgot. Well, Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. I think that movie really, 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 really turns and twists a lot. And I also think the direction that he took with Adam Sandler, especially being with that Adam Sandler has never been like in a fantastic critic movie. I think that really turns the tables, though, with the direction that he takes in terms of him being a drug dealer and him having this different persona. But I think the Safdie brothers, though, they have a collection that's unbeatable. Yeah, Safdie brothers are really dope. But I will say, Paul Thomas Anderson, Punch Drunk Love, Adam Sandler. That we is cr- it, that is we critically acclaimed. But so, uncut gems. so but so is Uncut Gems for sure. But um, Uncut Gems is dope. I love that movie so much. I also I own that movie on Criterion. It's so dope. The box Hell for yes. the the whole the box for it is so beautiful. But um, yeah, it's a it's like a it's got like the diamonds like the inside of the diamonds is like the outside of the box. It's great. But that's bad. That's badass. Yeah, it's dope. Um, but. Uh yeah, I love the Safdie brothers. I'm very excited to see what they do next. I love that Benny Safdie is also just like kind of delving into his own acting stuff. He was in Oppenheimer, and he mm-hmm. was in a few other things. I think he, I think he's in some. I think he was in, um, the Frankenstein movie that's coming out with Guillermo del Toro. I feel like oh I yeah, heard he he is gonna announced. be in that. I feel like I heard him announce for that for some reason. But I can't wait for that one. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. But um Yeah, so the Safety Brothers, that's a good pick. hmm Alright, Zachary, what about you? God. Number three. Number oh, three. Three three. Three 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 three. That's um, a good angel number. <laughs> mm. Um I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go Jordan Peele. Okay. Okay. Ooh, all right. None of his movies he has not missed once. He's not. He has not. Even Candyman, which he produced, he didn't miss. No, I lo- I really like that movie. I love the original Candyman, but I know you do. You I know. Uh, uh, trust me, I like yeah. the original too. The original is better, but well, we move. I, um, I need to. The new one I heard was pretty creepy though too. It was really good. It is really good. That's um. Yeah, yeah, Abdul Mateen the second. He's but the, the director. Uh oh my god! Nia of Costa. the original. The Marvels, baby! Woo! That movie's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. Okay. You're the only one. Nia da Costa is dope, and I'm very happy to see. It. I'm, I'm very happy to, to see, see her. Direct that. Yeah, me too. Like, it looks like you can't even lie. The Marvels, like, at least the aesthetic and the cinematography of the whole movie, even if it ends up being a bad movie, it does look better than Captain Marvel, at least. Oh, 100%. I think the visuals definitely are going to take it away at some yeah. point. If it, it doesn't get, if it doesn't get nominated for the visuals, then that's kind of uh, pushing it too far. It does look really good. I don't know. I don't know if it'll get a nomination. It just depends on how good it is and if it ends up being like awesome. But yeah, we'll see. I agree. Zach, you can continue. I'm done. Oh yeah. Okay. I want to say um for like I think Zach has a criteria like he has to have seen like 3 of their movies or something like that. I was originally going to do like 5, but I ended up changing mine to 3 because it was too hard. And then uh, so yeah, I have mine at 3 as well. Do you have like a, a little criteria or are you just like whoever pops to mind is just your fave? It's kind of who pops to mind with me cuz I have like a little list if y'all want want it to continue. Yeah, I got you. I um, I was just wondering, but yeah, um, my number. Wait, is it my turn? Yep. Yeah. My number three right now for today is Greta Gerwig. 
Yes, the goat. Sir. The goat. One of the, the goats. winner of them all. That female filmmaker working with. Yes, she has two amazing movies that are five stars for me, which is Lady Bird and Little Women. And then Barbie came out, and it's awesome. It's four and a half, and it'll probably go up on a rewatch, but. You know, I haven't gotten the chance to rewatch it yet. But, yeah, so she just hasn't missed yet, as well as, like you said, with Jordan Peele, like, she hasn't missed, and she just makes, like, amazing films that always leave an impact, and you just think about them for weeks on end. And, yeah, so I just love Greta Gerwig, and I can't wait to see what she does next. She's also a great actress, and I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> And also, Barbie was the first uh, to add her on the one million for the one million as the first woman director to cross one million. Billion. Let's give, let's With give a, a round B. of applause. Let's go. That is that is that is a crazy thing to think about, though. That's insane. Mm-hmm. I'm, right. I'm proud of her. She deserves it. Yeah. Let's hear it. Cam number three. Oh, number Trace? Ah, what? who do we got here? Well, there's only one movie that he's really directed, but he's also done some TV episodes. Uh, Dan Trachenberg. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think... Uh, really t- and right. Prey. Yeah, and, and Prey. I really think that that man does have a bit of a direction, per se. He definitely can pull the strings a little bit on some ends. Like, he's not perfect. But I feel like in terms of where he goes with direction-wise, I could definitely see how he has a different impact on filming. Because I think 10 Cloverfield Lane, that movie does really breathe a life of its own. And I think overall as like a doomsday type of movie, it definitely is a lot different than I thought. And that's why I really liked it. Yeah, 10 Cloverfield Lane is awesome. And so is Prey. Prey was like one of my favorite movies last year. And... Mm -hmm. Like, I'll never get the image of the Predator knocking a bear out of my brain because I love that scene so much. I just freaking love the idea that the Predator went in time travel, that we actually got to see that. I know. I want to see a Predator versus Samurai movie now. Oh, my that'd be God. So, that'd be badass, actually. That'd be so awesome. Come on, Zach. You can't, you can't disagree with that. Okay. No, the Predator... I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm saying I would... I I would give my soul to see that movie. I know. That'd be yes. so sick. And to be um, fair, the the first one, it's all right in my opinion. I it's definitely the best out of the best. Predator two, it's good. Predators good, but the Predator awful. Straight awful. Mm, yeah, the Predator was not good. Mm. The twenty eighteen one? Yeah, it was yeah, not very the good. Shane, the Shane Black I, one. Yeah, I like I like the director, but I know, like, I felt like on paper everything looked that. great with that movie. Mm-hmm. And then it just ended up being not good. I think the problem is, like, with that was, like, height, height, the height, the peak of Marvel. And they were like, okay, we need a franchise, people. Let's think about it. Let's make The Predator our franchise. And we're going to try to make this, like, a Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it just didn't work. So I'm very happy, though, that they actually made Prey. Because after the dumpster fire that was the predator i didn't really think we would see a predator movie for a minute and so i'm very happy that prey came out sadly it was only on streaming it would have been dope to see that in theaters but you know imagine the surround sound too of the fight it would have been so fucking cool yeah it would have been awesome Mm. all right zachary number two number two uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go a a god of filmmaking. Uh oh. Let's, let's go, oh, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Uh, let's go. All right, all right, my guy. I see you. He's got. He hasn't missed. I don't. Nope. I mean. Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of his best movies. For sure. I I a hundred percent agree. Isle of Dogs is amazing. I love Isle of Dogs. That's a very yeah. underrated one. I really did like that one too. I don't know why. I just Isle of Dogs was just pretty good to me. But my, I know a lot of people love that movie. My favorite while most people's favorite is 
um, Grand Budapest. That mm. is my favorite Wes Anderson. Mm. Yes. The French Dispatch was all right. It yeah. could have been better. I like the I like the idea. I see the vision, but I didn't see the execution. Also, Timmy. Also, Timmy, and also Tilda, Tilda Swinton in that movie. Yeah. Insane. To be Zach, to be fair, there's one movie of his that I did not like, and if it has to be sad, it's the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. That one, mm. I think, it's that, not. I've actually heard that's one of his better ones. I've never it's not, catched that movie. I've never seen that one. It's got it's Bill Murray in it. it. Yeah. All of his movies have Bill Murray in it. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them do. But except, I, my, except Asteroid City. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I haven't seen Asteroid City. My boy City got yet. COVID two weeks before film. That's tough. So um, you have to, you have to yeah. watch it, Zach. I have to watch Asteroid City. But uh, my favorite Wes Anderson is Moonrise Kingdom. That's fair. That movie That's a good so one good. Too. It was Succession before Succession. <laughs> Fair. That movie is awesome. Yes. What about you, Spencer? Okay, moving on to my number two, which might shock people that he's only number two, but it's Noah Bomb back. Ooh. Yep, yes, yep, sir. yep. I, I know. Told you it was there. I know. I. Well, earlier it wasn't because I was going to do five movies and I've only seen three of his films. But then I was like, I'm changing it to three and I don't care. And, you know, this is a personal list. And obviously, Marriage Story is my favorite movie of all time. I've talked about this so many times. So, yeah. Also, Adam Driver. They're gone. Daddy Adam Driver. Y'all are gone for a second. Hold on. Oh, they're back. Yay! Yay! So, yeah, we got, um, yeah, Marriage Story, and then Francis Ha is also amazing. Greta Gerwig gives a great performance. Adam Driver gives a great performance. Everybody in that movie is amazing. I just love that Noah Bomba can make, like, it. I love when movies feel so real and, like, you, you can't really tell that you're watching a movie and you just feel like you're a part of whatever you're like whatever scene they're in you feel like you're a little fly on the wall and i think noah bombach does that perfectly just with his writing and his direction Bro, that and argument I, scene is peak it is it is and i hate that it's been memed but we'll we'll move <laughs> and then anyways but yeah no bombach number two and yeah hmm. yeah dude yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This might be a big shock to a lot of people who like movies, but uh, if I had to choose my number two, it's the one who possibly tried to start cinema and he got as far as this, but it's going to be Stanley Kubrick. Woo! Mr. K-Man. Mr. Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick alone, he's the... He's that guy. He's just that man who started as a photographer in New York. He apparently never went to school at times, and he would usually just go around taking photographs and was eventually hired at around 15 years old. Um, He started off with Barry London. I don't think that movie is terrible. It definitely has a ease of direction of where he's going. I think his movie with the... What's the one about the atomic bomb? I forgot. Which one is that, actually? Oppenheimer. <laughs> exactly. He's He directed Oppenheimer from the start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting somewhere. Hold on. Yeah. Zach, do you know which one it is? What director? Stanley, Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick. Oh, is it 2001? Oh, no, no Doctor Strangelove. That's it. Mm. Oh, I think that one definitely has a more uh, amiable approach, even though it's pretty much centered around war. It's also a black and white pick, so if anyone's really interested in that type of uh, chromatic, that's up your alley. Obviously, he directed Here's Johnny, The Shining. Uh, I have it on DVD. I honestly think that movie, it definitely is timeless. It is 100% better than the book, and the miniseries don't watch do not watch 
<laughs> I think the the story behind The Shining it's so it's way too deep for me to get into, but I think overall seeing it from the perspective of somebody who is gone almost mentally insane and who's definitely dealing with ghosts of the past, it's definitely going to be easier for you to catch on with just how difficult it was to make this movie. It was almost at least, I think, a span of nine months for this movie to happen. Dang. Yeah. And also, we can't forget uh, Full Metal Jacket itself. I really think uh, that movie definitely has a good approach on how war can turn can turn the minds of people when it's not being stared at most, most upon. And most importantly, 2001. I think that movie really can hold up its time today, especially since that movie was made in 1968 and the fi- and instantly when that ape throws up the rock in the air and it instantly shifts into the spaceship. I can't even believe how many Pixar movies have met, have left over Kubrick eggs in Toy Story on the floor. It's literally the overlook rug on his on his rug. I I, I can't believe that so many people have replicated this guy's art, but yeah. I don't think he's the top of the top though. He's definitely hit there though for me. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick. I I have not delved into his into his catalog as I know I should. I feel like one day I'm just gonna sit down and watch like all of his movies and like have a otherworldly experience, but I, I just haven't done that. I I've watched The Shining, and I've literally like considered watching 2001 so many times, but it's like nearly three hours, and I'm like. I'm going to watch something else. <laughs> so, so, But I should probably just buckle down and watch it one day and just love it. I know I love all those movies. I need to watch them, though. I can't disagree with you on that. It's so difficult just to sit on the couch and watch. Yeah. Like, it's just hard to find the time to do that nowadays, especially when it's like when a movie is over two hours, it's like, dang. I don't know if I can do this right now, (laughs) but I love it when I have the time and I'm just like, okay, I can watch a long movie right now and I just do it. But yeah. Zach with Oppenheimer again. (laughs) I don't think I could watch Oppenheimer again. I don't think so either. No. Like once you got it and once you experience it in the theaters, even at home, it's not going to feel as good. And you know, so Experience is never the same. Yeah. So, Zach, I think What's we're you ready number one? To roll into our number unos. Well, number uno, director. This is, this is 100,000% going to change. Um, but I guess... Oh. I almost forgot about my number one pick. My number one is Damien Chazelle. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Obvious. <laughs> I forgot you said that earlier. Whiplash. Yeah. La La Land. Whiplash especially. Babylon. Babylon was great. First Man, which is one of his weaker ones. Yeah. But he rarely misses. He Yeah, he does really miss, doesn't he? One of, one of my other ones that I was going to pick was the Calm Brothers. But mm. we digress. That's an under, like underrated one. Another honorable mention. <laughs> but yeah, Damien Chazelle, yeah, he is he's definitely like up and he's definitely one of the up and coming filmmakers that are, are really exciting. Cuz yeah. I mean, he he hasn't missed. I've never watched First Man, but from what I've seen, he's never missed. La La Land is like has a special place in my heart, and every time I rewatch it, it gets better and better. And I I find myself constantly thinking about just rewatching it just because of how much I love La La Land. It's on Netflix. So. I know. And I, well, I have it on Blu ray. So I literally, at any point in time, I could just pop it in my old PlayStation and just watch it. But I'm scared. I'm, a, I'm always playing the soundtrack back and forth. It's, it's timeless. Too timeless. City of stars. I know. Oh, gee, they look so cute. How do I not mention Mike Flanagan or James Bond? What the fuck? Yeah, um, it's hard. You, you, I'm telling you, man. I have yeah, so many in my brain. But I got too just... many to name out. Spencer, you're number one. Spence, man. So this was a tough thing, but I just think 
that this director to me right now has he's just like he rarely misses Mm -hmm. he's got a good deep catalog that you can dive into and i just i love all of his i love his movies that i've seen so my number one right now for today at 1055 is guillermo del toro Yes, sir. Pan's Labyrinth. I mean, yeah, you got Pan's Labyrinth. You got um, Pinocchio from last year. You got... Criminally underrated Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak. You got I have, Shape I of Water. I haven't you, seen you've got either. Shape of Water is amazing. Shape weird. of Water is awesome. Shape I- of Water is literally like... I would love that if it was just injected into my veins. I would live happy because i don't know it's just like everything i love in movies it's funny it's got romance it's got horror like you rarely see that mixed i know bones and all did it last year and i really love bones and all and this year or a few years ago shape of water you got the creature and he's terrifying at first but then you start to like him and then it turns into a beautiful romance movie and it's weird i don't care i love it um and then also you just always forget about it but the dude did hellboy and hellboy is fire i don't care what anybody says hellboy 2 the golden army is one of the best comic book movies in my opinion i I wish i wish david harbour's hellboy was so much better oh man that had so much potential i i really did like ron perlman a lot better in my opinion but to be fair david harbour deserved a chance they should have brought back guillermo del toro to direct it i mean i don't know if he would have done it but they they could have done anything else (laughs) that movie sucks so bad (laughs) i'm sorry i like that movie is one of the most disappointing movies i've ever seen i was so excited for that movie though i was baffled when i saw that yeah, I actually the first time I watched it, I turned it off after thirty minutes. I was like, okay. "Oh, so many directors are coming yeah. into my head now. I hate this." So yeah. Oh man. I know. Yeah, we're gonna. This is one of our regrets of our lives. Steve McQueen. Oh my god. Yeah, there's a few. Ugh. Tarantino. I, Damn. I mean Tarantino. None of us. I mean, I don't know what Cam's last one is, but none of us had yeah. Tarantino. I don't know if this one will shock you or not, but yeah. I guess we're. Camden, I guess one. Cam. Yeah. All right, one. man. I I guess we're gonna hit number one now for the time being. It, being that I've been involved in cinema since I was a young lad myself, <laughs> I've I've been in love I've been in love with movies ever since I was young, and this director has stuck with me since childhood. He's been all the way up since the 70s and i've been quite attached to him for a long time but uh number one has to be for right now and it's probably going to change sooner or later today august 15th 2023 at 11 o'clock at night it's going to be the one and only steven spielberg yes sir yeah yeah that's fair but it's a basic pick what okay who cares all right all right zach Zach, we don't need film bro coming in right now. Okay? It might it might be basic, but it's not wrong. That's the main thing. It's not wrong. Spielberg he, is incredible. He brought up the directors in Hollywood, and so many people take inspiration from him. So many do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He is he is the godfather of cinema right now. I really think the uh, the Fablemans, which is a life story about him, it really does delve in deep about how he really did grow up. I think the story about him overall becoming obsessed with trains and then starting to use that potential inside the studio. I think the story of him becoming a director in general is good. His earlier works, Duel, the story of the truck chasing the couple, yeah. that's a pretty good classic. You obviously have Jaws, which I've been attached to for a long time. And it's the best shark movie, in my opinion. Nothing's going to beat it. Meg 2. No, I'm just playing. Agreed. agreed. Meg 2 crowd. The Trench. Come on, Jason. All right. No, but. Staff. Indiana Jones, man. He and and George Lucas, they all came up with that themselves. And without Lucasfilm, it would not happen to this day. Yeah. I mean, Schindler's List, Schindler's List Jurassic Park. You uh, got oh 
I need That's to insane. watch Schindler's List again. That that movie. That movie had me bawling. I've bawling never again. seen it. I've never it's seen it. Again. I'm looking for it. I've been looking Spit, for it. Spit, it I will warn you. you. It's going to. It it's going to make you cry. I promise you. I don't know if it's on Criterion. I've looked through the Criterion catalog. I've never seen it. How? It's. I in think Congress's it should be a library. It should be. Wait for. Is it Criterion? Hold on. Yeah, but. I don't know. I've just never, um, I've never found it on any streamings. I've wanted to watch that movie for so long. It was on Peacock for a while. You you said it was on Peacock for like a day, and I was like, dang. I'm actually curious. Schindler's List, bro. Wait, I'm not seeing it actually. Uh, Zach, I know. I don't think it's on there. I would have gotten the, it already. That's something I would have. I would be willing to buy. Yeah, I, I, I would have gotten it already. This movie in Spielberg's category, in my opinion. Yeah, he's. I, okay, yeah, I mean Spielberg. Uh, you can't I, go wrong with him. Yeah, I really think uh, the first two Jurassic Parks are good. The Lost World. It's a really underrated Jurassic Park, in my opinion. It doesn't have the entire cast, but Jeff Goldblum though and uh, Pete Postlethwaite. That dude was a really underrated actor. He actually pulled some pretty good punches in that film. And I also think the idea of the T-Rex in San Diego, it may sound ludicrous, but if it it was executed pretty good in my opinion. And that's just yeah. me speaking. Bro, and we literally forgot. He did E.T., Saving Private Ryan. I mean, The Color Purple. He did, what else? He's got West Side Story from a few years ago. This dude... He he is like undeniably like one of the goats. Like he, if there's a Mount Rushmore, he is on it. You know, but 100%. for like my personal, he's not on my top like directors. But like obviously, yeah. when Most you come to mind of directors, he's number one, number two, number three, like up there. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's just my personal. Yo, yeah, and I understand, like, I understand growing up on his films, because I definitely grew up on the Indiana Jones movies, and I grew up on the uh, E.T., for sure, and Jaws. I mean, I grew up on all of his stuff, but I guess it just hasn't stuck with me as moving on, but maybe I just need to rewatch a few of them, and then I'd be, like, in the same boat as you, you know? <laughs> I grew up on yeah, Star yeah, but stay, stay true to you, though, you know? For sure, and I, I think... Is rough and coarse and it gets everywhere. What is it? Sand is rough and coarse and it gets everywhere. It gets everywhere. Oh, That's goodness. the best movie quote of all time. Yes, it is. Let's go. Hayden Christensen <laughs> back for Ahsoka. Let's go. Come on. I th- what are y'all, what are y'all thoughts on Ahsoka, if you I, had to give it right now? I don't want to watch it because I haven't watched Rebels. So I feel like I need to watch Rebels. Rebels is really good. I know, I f- but I just don't have the time, really so I think I'm going to like watch a YouTube video to explain Rebels to me, and then I'll watch this. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Go, go to go to Screen Rant, have somebody explain yes. to you, and then you're saved. And Because I don't know, I just have too many things. I don't want to, you know. Also, Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana, Saldana yeah. And Thrawn. Grand Admiral Thrawn is coming into live action. It's pretty crazy. I... I cannot wait to see that. I'm yeah. actually pretty hyped for that. That's pretty dope. So I'm I'm pretty hyped for Ahsoka, honestly. I'm excited. But um we will forget about Mandalorian season three though. Yes, we will. Um but who okay, back to the Spielberg. We all know Spielberg is peak. So mm-hmm. Zach, what is your favorite Spielberg movie? Go. Ooh, that's difficult. Um Oh, see, now we got you. <laughs> His favorite and my favorite movie of his. Yeah. It has to be. I'm trying to think of all the movies he's done. I mean, Jurassic Park, Saving Private Ryan, E.T., All the Indiana Jones, Close Encounters. Yeah. Yeah, Jaws. I'm going to have to say my favorite of his. Damn, that's something he produced. Fuck. Um, <laughs> he's produced so many good movies too. Yeah, he, he did Ready Player One too. That's a good movie. That was alright. It's right, overly in my hated. 
it's overly hated. I think it's I think it relies too much on like cameos and Easter eggs, but I think that's like the point. But whatever. Oh well, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Spielberg's classic Jaws. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, there's no wrong answer here. It's just like whatever. All of them. Yeah. Just whatever comes to mind. What about you, That's, Spencer? My th- okay. Honestly, it's weird because for right now, what comes to my brain is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Because I just I, love feel, the Temple of Doom. I feel like Temple that's of Doom the Doom best Doom. Indiana Jones movie, and I think that's. that's I know it, and it's crazy to me because I think like, like Rage of the Lost Arcs, it was really good, and like it was revolutionary. But like the it's sequel, cool. the sequel was just like I think it was just better overall. And and the I, best part is it's a prequel too. It is a prequel. Yeah, that's true. It's not a sequel. It's a prequel. But yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, short round, you got a short round in there. And yeah. I just think it's so much fun. Oscar winning short round. Yes, sir. Dude, uh, Kihi Kwan, man, he deserved it. He did. Of- Proud of him. Spielberg produced Goonies. Oh, yeah. The, the Goonies was good. Directed by Richard Donner. Oh, man. Richard Donner's dope, though. I haven't, I haven't heard of him in a only- while. Richard Donner did the original Superman, which I love. Yeah. That's right, he did do that. He did the good Superman movies. Yes. Did y'all remember watching The Last Crusade? I do love... I love all the Indiana Jones movies, but yeah, Last Crusade's dope. I think with Sean Connery, that's kind of what made it better, because he was the original James Bond, but... Yeah, Sean Connery like definitely added his... What's up? You like... You like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Uh, I I don't think it's bad. I think it's like it's fine. It's definitely the worst of the whole series, but it's not bad. Like the dialogue, it's still it's better. it's still Spielberg. At the end of the day, it's still he he knows how to make a movie. And you, when you watch that movie, you don't go, "Oh, this guy has no idea what he's doing. This is a ter- terrible movie." Like mm-hmm. you see the vision. It just wasn't executed properly to compared to other Indiana Jones movies, so I think that movie is a bit overhated. But yeah, Dial, Dial of Destiny is just was just way was just disappointing. I mean, yeah, Dial of Destiny could have been better, but you Especially know, with the director. I mean. James Mangold, I, that's, I don't think it's his fault either. I just think that, like, right now, we didn't even really need a ending. We don't need an ending to Indy. But, you know, it, when things make money, they make money, and that's what Disney wants to do. So, they... Also, fuck you, Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> I don't like her. I don't like her either. It was kind of her she's fault. gone. She's so gone. I mean, she's, she's probably going to be fired, but, like... I feel like we always blame Kathleen Kennedy whenever something as bad is going on, but we always like forget that she also did great stuff too. Like she, she gave us Andor. Stuff. She gave us Rogue One. True. Andor True. was a good show. I did like Andor. So, but her bad shit outweighs her good stuff. That's true. That is also true. So Yeah. But I just I think that's this uh we need to give her a little bit more credit because she is dope and she makes like as a studio head and as a producer she has made like so much money for disney but mm-hmm. it's, but that's like money wise but like critically and like fan base wise she's kind of ruined it but whatever. So, and the star it doesn't help that the star wars fan base is so fucking toxic for sure they're definitely the most yeah. toxic fan yep. And, you know, and it's all their fault that. Oh. You know, right. just to. Oh, wait, oh. Zach, were you saying something? No, no, you can go ahead. Oh, I was going to say to dive into that pool, though. Uh, if I had to give any of the Star Wars uh, sequels uh, a good one, it's definitely The Last Jedi over the rest of them. That has to I be my favorite. The Last Jedi. I think The Last Jedi is probably the best of the, the sequels. Overhated. Okay, Rise of Skywalker is. The worst movie I've ever seen. 
no. And, <laughs> I think what's funnier is that I literally bought it on Blu-ray and I didn't know why. It's just that I wanted to see Palpatine, but it was literally such a dumpster fire. It, it was, was so bad. bad. I was disappointed in and it, so much. It just ruins also like the whole... I guess it doesn't ruin it. Like you can still, I guess you, you can just tune out Rise of Skywalker and you can enjoy the rest of Star Wars. But like the whole point of the arc of Anakin Skywalker, his whole six movie arc is ending up killing Palpatine in, um, what is the third one called? I forget. Return of the Jedi. And then, yeah. but then they just randomly bring him back because they want to, make money and because it's palpatine they're like hey we're gonna make money i think they brought him back because they didn't know what to do because they i know they're confused and they're like oh these people want to see palpatine again right and like everybody's like oh my god bro for real i i really yeah. do think it was disney's fault 100 percent because of marketing and also because of people they added on board but ryan johnson really did not deserve all that hate he really did deserve some more praise for that because jj jj Abr abrams He's a good filmmaker, but he needs to hire better people on board instead of letting Disney executives come in and make the decisions for him. That's just my advice for him. But were, uh, was the um, stupid gambling planet really needed? No, no, it wasn't. But no. Was... Uh, that scene was pretty out of pocket, but I thought it was kind of funny, to be fair. But, and Benicio Del Toro in that movie is... It's just weird. I don't know. I love Benicio Del Toro. <laughs> like, like I love him as a dude. Like, you're great. I love you in Sicario so far. I'm just now finishing that movie. But, like, you, he was very pointless in that movie. He was just there. Yeah. He was just there. The sequels are definitely the worst trilogy of the Star Wars franchise. Yeah. Oh, oh, 100%. And so, but like, if I had to give one a watch, I'd, it'd be the last Jedi. I I actually really like Force Awakens. I mean, Force Awakens, like, it's a good movie. Yeah. But think, in terms of story, yeah, I think. But the potential, the reason why I don't like the Force Awakens on rewatches, because I know what happens in the trilogy, and so like, I like the way they set up Finn. And the way they set up Ray, it was pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie; I really liked how it started, and then it just got muddied with the second. Like the second was good, but it got a little muddied, and then the third was just like they tried to course correct, but it just wasn't working. And so, like, I get why people think the second one's the worst, but like on their own merits, just movie alone. The second is probably my favorite, Last Jedi. The reason Force Awakens was so loved at first is because we didn't know what came after it. Yeah. And and really, the whole point of The Force Awakens, it was literally just the A New Hope being rehashed. That's yeah. really all it was. It was A New Hope Part 2. And then, man, it really sucks. Like, it really makes me so mad that we never saw Han, Leia, Luke, and Chewbacca in the same frame in the sequels. That, re that really did piss me off that they never brought them back together. If they oh, had, oh, man. if they had it, it, one shot of them in the trailer, just one frame of them four together, two billion dollars, easy. But they're dumb. I don't know what they're doing. And it's yes. and it's just it's just sad though because Carrie Fisher mm, yeah I know uh, and she literally died literally I think it was right after the Force Awakens and before they even started filming for the Last Jedi it's no, no she, she died yeah. after the Last Jedi after the Last Jedi that's yeah right. and um but she filmed I think she only filmed a little bit for uh, Rise of Skywalker but that they, she did but she had a they, they had leftover her. deleted scenes. Yeah, they used yeah. her CGI-ness. <laughs> say, say what you want about that death scene, but that is one of the coolest scenes I have ever seen in a movie theater. Really? Of Leia's death? Yeah. Which one? Wasn't, that, that... wasn't she just like laying on a bed? No, the one where the star, 
where the star warps through the other. Oh yeah, that scene is oh, dope. That's oh, Ky- where Kylo shoots her out. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. Oh, so Daddy Adam Driver. Okay, yes. Adam Dr- Adam Driver got way too much hate for being a crybaby. His acting was phenomenal. He's so in that good movie. in those movies. He is He's like one of the only good actors in those movies. I th- the problem is they didn't do anything with him. They he was literally just there to say a line to Ray. Okay, walk away. Say another line to Ray, but more sensually speaking, and then have your shirt off in the next scene. That's all we want you to do. All right, your shirt off with your pants pulled up to your nipples. Perfect, Adam. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> why, why were his pants pulled up so high though that's like he had abs but for what you're not showing him off you're just standing there with your pants pulled up to your nipples like what are you doing man disney uh, doesn't want to show enough nudity he's a weird i don't care adam driver's still the he's still the goat he's fine but... as hell still damn you still... when at the end of Rise of Skywalker, when Rey said, I'm Rey Skywalker. No, the fuck you're not. You're a fucking nobody. Like we learned in The Last Jedi. Go be a nobody. It's, more, it's better than a duck. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what Ryan Johnson was playing, though. I that's know. the irony. I liked, I liked that okay. he was a nobody. Exactly. Okay. Originally, Skywalker. Yeah, because in the original screenplay, instead of The Rise of Skywalker, it was going to be called Star Wars A New Order. That sounded like a way better name than The Rise of Skywalker, in my opinion. And also, the story of it being laid out, I thought it was very well thought out thematically speaking. It would have also had, spoiler alert for anyone who reads, obviously, because it never came out, but Kylo Ren dies in the movie. And also, they find out later on that Rey really was a nobody in the original it, she never had anything to do with Palpatine. She never had anything to do with the Force. She was really just brought up as the Skywalker. And I thought yeah. alone that would have been a way more fulfilling end to Star Wars. For sure. Yeah, Disney did not let Abrams have any creative freedom on that last movie. Yeah, because, I mean, it's dumb because then you just, like, really limit yourself. Because, like, honestly, the only two families that are represented in the star wars movies are the palpatines and the skywalkers and that's just dumb i mean i guess we have like obi-wan but like if everything's in a small little circle and like there's a whole galaxy like why would we have to focus on like two families in this whole saga it's it's dumb yeah the palpatine alone was pointless but it was nice seeing ian mcdermott he still is a good actor yeah, I mean, get that bag for real. Bro probably got so much money just to come back to get moved around on a crane and yell a couple lines. Oh, that man, <laughs> that man, that man had a contract. Uh, there was a there was a comment that said, "I want to know who slapped Palpatine's cheeks." It was too good. <laughs> oh, bro. That's just an uncalled for comment. <laughs> okay. It makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? Because the apparently her parents were clones. That was the whole freaking point. Yeah. I thought it, it, it was just, it was ludicrous as hell. I'm just saying. <laughs> Man. I also is he think... Blanket? Yeah, he is. I, I don't up? know. I think the grandfather thing was just so... It was so obvious from the get-go, but it was just so unnecessary and it so was. stupid. It was. I know. that, And, like, oh man, I don't know. that. Those movies, I hate them. Or, well, I guess we all hate them, but those movies had so much potential to be amazing. Like, really, they had, they had, good, they had a good body, but just everything they filled out with it, inside of it, just sucked. Like, I mean, you got Adam Driver one of the best actors that he was an unknown at the time and he's playing a Sith Lord. That is awesome. And then you got a, a pretty good first movie, but in hindsight, it's not as good because of what the sequels did. And then you got a pretty dope second movie, but everybody hated it. But because Star Wars fans are going to hate on anything that comes out. Exactly. And then if they just stayed on course and did number three, 
in line with the first two, then they wouldn't have the problems they would today. And now because of the stupid fan base, we'll never be able yeah. to see a Christopher McQuarrie Star Wars movie. Nope. No, we know. see Taika a... Waititi. Oh, I know, man. I, the, well, they keep announcing these directors like they're going to do anything, and they never Ryan, actually... Uh, Ryan Johnson trilogy. Yeah. Oh, Ryan know. Johnson, I would be on board with that 100%. You know what I think they should do? I think they should say, you know what? Who is one of our biggest fans in this Star Wars space? Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, we get Leonardo DiCaprio. Now what? We have Leonardo DiCaprio. Now we get Martin Scorsese. Let's make a trilogy of this. And I'll be like, okay, this is perfect. But that's never gonna happen. <laughs> they they make an entire Goon Squad movie in in space. But like, why why not? Because Leonardo DiCaprio is such a big fan of Star Wars. Why not just sign him to three movies, have him be this lead, and then just give him a great director. Boom. I mean, hell, they already had Jack Black and Lizzo in there, which was so out of place. Oh but but to be fair, though, <laughs> they did have other actors and actresses added in Star Wars. I cannot wait to see more because, honestly, they're going to expand on it. But they need I to hated do better. That. What better. Happened, what happened to us forgetting about Mandalorian season three? That Did that season. Fucking window, or like what? I mean, I definitely forgot about it, but that's for sure. <laughs> I don't. I didn't. I didn't think it was bad, but uh, but writing wise, it was dog shit. Absolute dog shit. It just. I don't know. Just compared to the first two seasons, it just doesn't. And like the problem is now that we've gotten Andor. Nothing is ever going to be oh, as bad. good as Andor. I don't think, like, like that movie, that, I mean, that show is literally amazing. And, like, just, it just, everything else just pales in comparison to that, you know? I couldn't agree more. And I also think it added a lot more backstory to Rogue One. Because even with Rogue One as an idea, even before we got to know what A New Hope was about, because that's what people thought what happened before a new hope and we got it but and also there was so much length so much deep lore that you could actually connect with these people on i really did mm. love rogue one and i really yeah. think i really think gareth gareth mcedwards is no gareth edwards actually yeah he, he really sh he really should be given a, a little bit more freedom with star wars some days if he wants to come um, back oh the creator the creator. yeah the yeah the creator. the creator it looks yeah. pretty good, so good. You know what else I'm excited for? What? Okay, this is kind of out of left field, but Rebel Moon, I'm actually kind of hyped for. What's Zack that? Snyder? Oh, yeah. Oh, the Zack Snyder. That's right. I'm kind of hyped for that. I'm not going to lie. I still, need, I still need to watch his uh, three-hour version of Justice League. Four hour. Four hour. Four hour. I love I Okay, honest, I, I won't say I love that. But I just like that it happened. Like, I can't believe that the fans got that to happen. And it's pretty crazy. Even if the Zack Snyder fans, like, the problem is if they gave him, they gave him a little, like they gave him an inch, and now they want a mile. Now they want his universe to come back. And that's just not what's going to happen. But, yeah. but now that they gave them the Justice League that they were dying to see, now that they now that they got this, they're gonna be disappointed with everything else that comes out, which just makes no sense. So yeah, but anyways, Zack Snyder's fans are crazy, but I'm actually pretty hyped for Rebel Moon. Yeah, I want. I wondered if they released the uh, David Ayer cut of Suicide Squad, which I know will not happen. No, no, no. <laughs> Zach, you were quick, studios, you were quick to shoot that down. The suit. The studios messed that up, but we're. That'll never happen, though. The movie is terrible, and it will continue to be terrible. Because Probably. Jared Leto sucks dick. Literally. Hey. So, he's, not a bad, he's not a bad actor, but he was wrong for the role. He 100%. likes to send anal beads to his castmates. When t used. I'd take a used anal bead from Jared. What? Yeah. All right, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, I'm just joking. I gotta go to bed. All right, I think that's time for us to end this episode. Okay. That, that was a great cinematic dogs episode. <laughs> that was a good ending. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't kill myself. We, we, hope, we, 
<laughs> we hope we hope that you hear Zach's uh, overjoyous oh exclamations. We know we know that we got really out of pocket here, but this is who we are. <laughs> Yeah. I think I might need to bleep some of this episode. No. <laughs> it needs to be full explicit now. Just give, oh. just give a little warning right before. Be like, this episode contains anal beads. <laughs> <laughs> it contains sex toys. Discussion of sex toys. Oh, God. And talking about people with disabilities. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this oh, is horrible. Goodness. All right. We're terrible people. We're all gonna get canceled for this episode. We're going. We're going to hell already. All right, just, just, just end it. All right. <laughs> all right. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Cinematic Dogs and the most out of pocket thing I've ever been a part of. All right. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Peace.